Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I am glad to be here with you today and I have two announcements and then the vlog. Um, so the first announcement is kind of cool. It's that Kindle has decided to make the book, Bright Line Eating, The Science of Living Happy, Thin and Free, one of its special deals for the month of May. So this is May 2017. So if you're watching this vlog later in time, sorry, this doesn't uh, apply to you because it's only for now for May 2017. But for this whole month, uh, the book, Bright Line Eating, is available for a buck ninety nine on Kindle. It's one of their big Kindle specials. So Go ahead and go grab the ebook if you don't have it already. Now's the time to do it. And maybe share that on Facebook or whatever, whatever, if you want to just pass it along or tell your friends. If anybody's, you know, hard up for cash, you're like, hey, well, this is the time to get the book. Buck 99 can't beat it. So um, that's the first announcement. The second announcement is that by the time I shoot the vlog for next week, registration will be closed for our second annual big Brightline Eating Live event. It's called the Family Reunion. We do it once a year. We get together in San Diego, San Diego, California, USA, one of my favorite cities in the world. It's gonna be a three-day workshop, June 4th through 7th. And uh, it starts at dinner time on the 4th and ends at 11 a.m. on the 7th. Um, and it's just gonna be phenomenal. It's, it's on the subject of um, Brightline Living, the, the habits that make it all work, bright line living. So it's gonna be a workshop on habits. I'm gonna teach you the science of habits that most people aren't aware of. It's, it's sort of, it's gonna explain why you get started with some kind of new exercise regimen or new way of eating or new, um, you know, you declutter your house or whatever and then two or three or four months later you've backslid and you're right where you used to be. Well, uh, this workshop's gonna explain that. It's gonna make sure that you understand the science of how and why that happens and how to avoid that trap. And um, it's gonna go into a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I have a couple of guest speakers. We have a concert, we're gonna have a dance. It's gonna be so much fun. Um, yeah, if you didn't go last year, go ahead and click on the link down below and just watch, just take a second to watch the three minute video that we've got there. You'll get a sense of the vibe, the feeling of the event. It's gonna be phenomenal. My team is gonna be there. Um, hundreds of people are gonna be there. It's gonna be just fabulous. So the last few tickets are still available. Um, we just have a few uh, rooms available left in our room block. So go ahead and register if you wanna come. Last chance, registration will be closing on May 15th. So, those are the two announcements. Now, my subject for this week's vlog um, comes from my own experience over the last couple weeks, couple months, three years, depending on how you look at it. And the subject of the vlog, if you haven't noticed, is letting go of the number. So, by the number I mean the weight, like what, what you weigh. And, um, so let me just give you some background here on my story. I, um, at my peak, was about 170 pounds, which for me, I'm five, three and a quarter. That's obese, but barely. Um, like, you know, just past the border of the overweight into obese on the BMI chart. Um, I lost 60 pounds in six months to get down to 110 pounds um, back in 2003. And since then, my weight has fluctuated um, other than being pregnant, right? But fluctuated between, I would say, a low of 105 and a high of maybe 125. All of those weight ranges are, for me, a size four. But, you know, on the low end of that, I'm, you know, they're drooping off me. And on the high end of that, they're tight. But it's all sort of within the same closet full of clothes. So I have one closet full of clothes. I haven't had to buy new clothes in all those years. But my weight has really fluctuated. Um, in general, it stayed around 111, 112, 113, give or take, right? And I always talk about goal weight being a range, not a number. So if your goal weight is 120 pounds or 140 pounds, then you wanna be thinking plus or minus two. So for a long time, I was thinking my goal weight was 110, but I would really live in the 112, 113 range. So really my range was more like 110 to 114, something like that. And I lived there for a long time. And then there were other times where um, like I was infertile and I was trying to um, improve my fertility. So I was uh, under doctor supervision eating more fat and my weight climbed up into the 120, 123 range deliberately sort of to see if that could sort of help my, my fertility situation. It didn't, but um, 
Anyway, so there were, there were different times when I tried different things. Um, most recently, um, I'm having a flare up in my Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. So I have Hashimoto's, my mom had it, my grandma had it. It's congenital, it's genetic. I've got this thyroid disease. We knew I was gonna have it. They tested me for the antibodies when I was a teenager, I had them. And um, it wasn't until later in life that I had to start taking thyroid medicine, um, just the hormone to replace you know, what my thyroid is not producing on its own because um, my body's attacking my thyroid gland. That's what Hashimoto's is. It's an autoimmune condition where your body attacks your own thyroid gland. Now, if you don't know, the thyroid governs the metabolism. So um, in 2003, I had the worst crash of Hashimoto's that I've ever had. And I was, here were the symptoms. I was cold. And I mean cold. Like I was in Sydney, Australia, and it was summertime there. Sydney's like San Diego, like it gets hot, um, you know, 80, 85, 90 degrees. And in that summer heat, I was wearing a black wool coat and gloves and a hat because I was so cold. And I'd get home at the end of the day and I'd soak my feet in a bucket of hot water and then take a hot shower because I could not warm up. I was cold. It was ridiculous. <laughs> um, and I was constipated. I could move my bowels like once a week. My body had slowed down that much. Your metabolism, you don't think of this, it governs everything. Like it governs every cell's ability to do its job. Your mitochondria fuel every system in your body. So everything had slowed down. Sex drive, non-existent, just ground to a halt. Everything had just slowed down. Um, and I was exhausted. Uh, I always tell the story of, um, I, I, it was so pointed because it was just a visual for me. I was walking across the street with a street light, crosswalk, the whole nine yards. I'm walking across the street and this little old lady hunched all the way over on a walker zooms past me, <laughs> like zooms past me. And I'm like, wow, I'm walking really slowly. <laughs> and I remember getting to the to the curb to step up onto the sidewalk and looking at the step that I had to take to step onto the curb and going, oh, like the effort to lift my leg up was so intense. So I was exhausted, really exhausted. Anyway, I finally saw somebody, got my thyroid treated, got my adrenals treated, blah, blah, blah. And I've been pretty fine since then. However, um, over the last um, three or four years, I would say, since my daughter Maya was born, she's five and a half now, um, I've noticed that my metabolism has been gradually slowing down. Now, I still have good energy. I'm not exhausted. I'm not cold. You know, I'm moving my bowels. My sex drive is fine. Like, all that's fine. So I haven't been worried about it too much. But what I'm noticing is that every little while, I got to cut my food plan by a little bit in order not to gain weight. Now I do bright line eating, I weigh and measure my food, my food plan is dialed in so I can do that. It's my prerogative to just sort of adjust my food to where it needs to be so that I weigh what I want to weigh. But in tandem with that, my weight was creeping up a little bit. So my food was going down and my weight was creeping up a little bit. And hmm, so now instead of 100 and 11, 12, 13 pounds, now I'm weighing 114, 15, then 115, 16, then 117, 18, and now, now I'm hovering around the like 117 to 119 range. I mean, I'm 5'3 and a little bit, so it's not, you know, I'm fat by nobody's standards, right? But the numbers, because I'm, I've been doing this for 14 years now, almost, so like I'm, I'm sensitive to the numbers, and I'm like, this ain't right. So this past month, I went on a 30-day challenge and I actually recorded a vlog about it. I'd made a calendar. I had this whole envelopes with $10, like it was a big thing. I did a 30-day challenge. And part of that 30-day challenge was I wanted to get off those five pounds that I was carrying. And, you know, I was doing it and it was basically working. Now, I didn't, I don't know if I said this in the vlog, I probably didn't, but I was eating less than the weight loss food plan. Over the last three years, I've had to eat the Bright Line Eating Weight Loss Food Plan in order to maintain my weight. That's how much my metabolism had slowed down with my Hashimoto's. Um, and yes, I'm seeing a doctor and yes, I'm trying all the dietary things. Yes, I've given up soy. You don't need to write into me to tell me to give up soy. <laughs> I've done it. All of those things. Yes, I'm looking at, you know, and you know, my antibodies are just through the roof. It's probably stress. Um, and yes, I'm, I'm, carving in time, me time into my calendar and I'm getting a massage, I'm going to the float tank. I'm like trying to do all the things, believe me. But like, you know, 
it's it's frustrating, right? Like these these things are not adding up, right? So I'm doing my 30 day challenge. I'm on a food plan that's about 60 to 70 percent of the of the Brightline Eating Weight Loss food plan, and I'm nailing it. Like I'm a rock star. Like boom, every day foods on the scale, X on the calendar, and glittery s- sticker stars. You know, doing awesome. Twenty two days into the 30 day challenge, I am losing a little bit of weight. You can see my abs are getting cut like like lines, you know, on my abs, like sweet. Um, I got my body fat measured at the gym. It's down by 2%. I've gained two and a half pounds of muscle. I'm down two and a half pounds of fat. Awesome. After dinner on day 22, I'm eating my dinner and I don't stop eating. Like my weighed food is gone and I'm eating more of the same food, not sugar and flour, but just more food. And I just have a big quantities binge and it at home, like this is not typical for me. And my head like spins around. I call my buddy. I talk to my mastermind group and it sort of feels like the universe is tapping me on the shoulder. Like, Hey, but I'm thick headed (laughs) and ridiculously ambitious. So I'm like, all right, we're, we're getting ourselves back together here. All right. We're resuming the 30 day challenge. Two days later, it happens again. Same thing. Dinner time, more food. Boom. And now I'm listening because more than being five pounds over my goal weight, what I mostly don't want to be is like crazy with food. Like I got no, no room in my life for being crazy with food. And now I've been crazy with food two nights out of three. Ugh, not okay. So, um, so I'm listening and the message is, Susan, Susan, this is not a diet get over the number on the scale. Like you're not well and you need to take a few months to figure out what's going on with your thyroid. You're seeing the doctors. I got a thyroid ultrasound. I'm doing all the right things. Ease up on yourself and let the number be. You need to weigh 117 pounds right now. End of story. Your body is talking to you. Let go of the number eat more food. You have a busy life. You need to eat more food than you're eating. So I talk it over with my mastermind group and all of them, there's three ladies in my mastermind group, four of us all together, right? All three of them are like, yay, of course. Yes, do it. Raise your goal weight. So officially a few days ago, I raised my goal weight number from 112 by five pounds up to 117. And I'm there. I'm in that range. Like my, my, my weight right now is easily every day between 115 and 119. So 117 plus or minus two, boom, I'm there. And when I let go of that number, like just wanting it to be lower, wanting it to be lower, when I let go of that number and decided I was there already, so many things fell out of that. For one thing, I was reminded again, this is a way of life, this is not a diet, And it made me think more about, you know, wanting a lower number for what, right? In nobody's world am I more attractive if I weigh five pounds less, except mine, right? I'm the only person who thinks that. Nobody else cares. Nobody else thinks that. My husband already wants to have sex with me every day. Like, there's nothing that's going to improve in my world if, like, I'm five pounds less, right? Nothing. Not a thing. So... Like, what's up with the number? What's up with the focus on the number? And some of it is that I just am a ridiculously ambitious kind of person. And so the the body as project metaphor that our society is so bought into, that our bodies are something to be worked on and something to be invested in and focused on and tweaked and honed, you know, I don't think that 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 approach is always pathological. I don't think that it's always a bad idea. I think if someone wants to be a bodybuilder and like go do that thing and they, you know, really enjoy that kind of focus and that kind of goal, fine. And I think if someone joins Brightline Eating and they're watching their weight go down and they're getting healthier in every way and their life is spinning together and their body as a project is now part of their world for a bit as they lose their weight, fine. But at the same time, I think about me and the people I've admired in my life in terms of how they relate to their body. And it's not people who have their body as a project. It's people who are living in their body. 
in a embodied sort of comfortable fluid sort of way like people who wear clothes that fit their body and people who um, love and accept and care for and cherish and nurture their body people who live in synergy with their body I remember watching when I was when I was obese um, and really tortured about my body I remember watching women they weren't always the thinnest women but they were the women who would tuck in their shirt and put a belt on and you know sit on the floor with their legs spread apart and stretch and move and feel um, comfortable you know crossing their legs and you know um, stretching a little and just they were they the way they moved in their body showed that they were there in there in their skin feeling grateful for their limbs and it didn't really matter what size they were I admired any woman who moved like that who was like that and I wanted what they had and today with just a little tweak I have that I am grateful in my body and I am at goal weight <laughs> I am in a right size body and it's interesting to me that I just had to let go of the number just shift the number actually just raise it up in order to have that again and I I was reflecting this past week that I felt um, a little embarrassed and a little um, irresponsible, irresponsible with you, with my tribe, for allowing myself to be so focused on trying to get my weight back down over the last few months. Because um, I guess I'm still getting used to the fact that my journey isn't just mine anymore. It's in service of your journey now. It's like it's a responsibility, right? I, I come here and I talk to you every week and what I'm doing with my food and how I'm thinking about my journey informs your journey. And for me to be trying to lose weight these last months upon months upon months upon months, for what? Like, I got no weight to lose really you know why am I so focused on those last few pounds especially when my body was telling me it didn't want to let them go you know um, it it I think what has been perpetuating the notion that this is a diet and that um, getting to some specific number is like that important um, so I guess the message in this vlog is we talk about being happy thin and free <clears throat> so first of all thin is totally up to interpretation right um, there is no um, perfect number that tells you you've gotten there you get to choose you get to choose and then the other thing is if pressured <laughs> about it prioritize the free happy thin and free is mostly about free we'll take happy too right and so I'm not saying, you know, stop when you've got 100 pounds to lose. I think that there are reasons to get, you know, the bulk of the rest of that excess weight off, you know. But once you're down in the range, once you're down to the point where your relatives are saying, you look great, and everybody's like, aren't you done losing weight yet? You know, when you're in that, that space, which if you haven't gotten there, you'll get there. Um, really, like, for me, I just realized, what's the point of having the whip out and, and forcing you know, a few pounds to come off that, that aren't looking to come off. There's no benefit. There's no benefit. But if I stop and I let myself let it not be about the weight and just prioritize the freedom and claim the freedom now, I am happy, thin, and free now. Not because I hit a number on the scale, but because I choose to be. <laughs> because I choose to rearrange the game, rearrange the narrative, rearrange the story so that I am happy, thin, and free now. And I get to reap all the benefits that that way of looking at it confers. So here's to being happy, thin, and free. And here's to prioritizing the free. That's the weekly vlog. I love you. And I will see you next week.